Hello, listeners and members of the club WWTH. It is with pleasure that I come into your home today, for I know those listening to me now are interested in helping people. If this were not true, you would not be listening. Let me take this opportunity to thank the many thousands who have been writing to me. I love to receive your letters, so when you have something, or even if you don't have something to say, still feel free to write, because I'll answer every letter. Many people have asked me what I mean when I say, build a fire in a person and not under him. My life has certainly been anything but good. Exciting, yes. Dangerous, yes. Honest, no. Rewarding, well, you might say yes and no to that question, but then it is through the grace of God that I am able to talk to you about the fire which was built in me. In 1962, about six months after I had been sentenced to Leavenworth Federal Penitentiary for 16 years, Mr. John Alexander, the guard who was in charge of me, working on construction, said to me one day, Ed, there are a few things I'd like to talk to you about, a few things I would like to point out to you. You seem like a very reasonable person, and you are a likable guy. You certainly seem to be intelligent, so will you listen to what I have to say? I said, yes, sir. He said, I have read your record in the administration building, and it seems that you were not or had not been participating in crime for money, but you were participating in crime mainly for the recognition. If this is the case, what do you have to gain by continuing your life of crime? You have been on the FBI's 10 most wanted list and have committed almost every crime imaginable other than crimes of violence and crimes of sex. You are certainly most fortunate to be alive today. For most people with your background at one time or another usually end up getting shot and killed. If you continue in crime now or upon your release from prison, then the only thing that you will gain is six feet of ground over your head or spending the rest of your life in a penitentiary. This certainly would not be the workings of a smart man. While you were out running around the country and committing crimes, you told people many lies. Lies such as you had a college education, and that you were a criminologist, a sociologist, a psychologist, and a psychiatrist. It seems that you were telling these lies because this is what you really wanted out of life, to have an education and to be a criminologist or to be able to participate or deal with crime in some way. If this is the case, why not take advantage of your time here at Leavenworth? Let time serve you instead of you serving time. Why not start back to school and get an education and learn a trade so that when you are released from the penitentiary, you will have a job, you will have an education, so that when you are released from the penitentiary, you will have the job and the education you were telling people about. You could have a job and know a trade so that you could work and live a free life and be a free man and not have to worry about the penitentiary food or the penitentiary procedures. Think about these things and let me know if this is what you want. If it is, I will do everything possible to get you started on the right foot. I decided that I certainly had nothing to lose by doing it, and if I liked it, I would have everything to gain. Mr. Alexander was certainly a likable guy. He seemed to always be on the level and trying to help people. If you had something to ask this man, or if you just wanted to talk to him, it seemed that he always had time to listen, even when it seemed apparent that he was in a hurry. At that time, I had approximately a seventh grade education. I went on to complete my elementary and high school education and two years of college. I received my associate arts degree from Highland Junior College, completed three courses in Dale Carnegie, completed five years of vocational training in the building trades, three courses in first aid, including the instructor's course, and three courses in civil defense, which also included the instructor's course. A lot of people have asked me how it is possible to get a college education while in the penitentiary. In Leavenworth, it came about in the following way. The state legislature passed a bill which enabled Highland Junior College to expand their campus. 
Hyatt Junior College was about 15 or 20 miles down the road. This expansion took in Leavenworth Federal Penitentiary. This is one reason that I can tell people that I was honestly on campus and not in the penitentiary. Once this expansion was completed, Highland Junior College then worked out a program with the University of Kansas so that the professors from both of these schools could come into Leavenworth and teach the same college courses that they taught outside. To attend college, you had to have a high school education and take an entrance examination. I managed to stay in Leavenworth for five years without one disciplinary report of any kind. This is what I mean when I say build a fire in a person and not under him. If you build a fire in a person, all he is going to do is move to another spot where it isn't quite as hot or quite as troublesome. If you build a fire in that person and get him interested in himself, then he sets his own goals and he knows where he is going. In this case, it was Mr. John Alexander who put the skates on my shoes and gave me a shove. It was then up to me to keep that momentum going and to set my goals. He took the time to read my record and to observe me. He wanted to help me, and he most certainly did. He is directly responsible through the grace of God for my being a free man today, and he is responsible for my being able to come into your home and talk to you today. As I said, I was at Leavenworth for five years, and not once while I was at that penitentiary did I have any kind of a disciplinary report against me. This in itself is a very, very difficult thing to do, especially when you start on a rehabilitation program as I did. For you always have those fellows around you who are jealous and those fellows who feel that there is some scheme to your new program. They wonder whose toes you might be stepping on, who are you squealing on, and things of this nature. So consequently, they agitate you. Guys who know that you can knock them down come up to you and smart off, hoping that maybe you will knock them down. In doing so, you will naturally be getting in trouble, and you would then have a black mark on your record, and this individual could then take the credit for this. So many times in those five years, I turned my back, and I ate my pride, but the fire in me was awful great and awful hot, and I decided that I would put every effort into my rehabilitation program that I had put previously into my career of crime. If I could keep this up, there isn't anyone who can change me or get me away from my rehabilitation program. After spending five years at Leavenworth, I transferred to the Lewisburg Federal Penitentiary in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Because Lewisburg was closer to my home in Akron, Ohio, and I had a good record, and they no longer considered me an escape risk or a bad criminal. All men are put into quarantine when they arrive at one of the penitentiaries, whether or not they have just been transferred. After I was released from quarantine, I started a first aid program and a civil defense program at Lewisburg. Here they trusted me and even gave me a job working outside of the walls during the day and sleeping behind the walls at night. I worked hard, but I loved it. Just the fact that they trusted me for the achievements which I had made at Leavenworth restored my faith in mankind and reassured me that there were a lot of people besides Mr. Alexander who wanted to help me and others. Before you can take advantage of this help, you have to know who you are and where you are going. You have to be interested in yourself and be willing to try to do the right thing. It will be hard work and it will always be hard work, but then I think that you will find your reward in the end. Upon my arrival at Lewisburg, I knew that I would be going up for parole in about six months. I also knew I was going to need a parole plan, so I started working on one. First, I needed a job. I wrote better than 100 letters to different people about getting a job around the Akron area. Only two people took the time to write back. One letter was from a rubber company stating that the only way they could hire me was for me to come there, take the test, fill out the application, and meet them. Of course, this was impossible at that time. The second letter was from a man who had a heating establishment in Akron. He wrote to me three or four times. He wanted to help me, but he couldn't.